Chapter 9 The Most Confidential Knowledge The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, My dear Arjuna, because you are never envious of me, I shall impart to you this most confidential knowledge and realization, knowing which you shall be relieved of the miseries of material existence. This knowledge is the king of education, the most secret of all secrets. It is the purest knowledge, and because it gives direct perception of the self by realization, it is the perfection of religion. It is everlasting, and it is joyfully performed. Those who are not faithful in this devotional service cannot attain me, O conqueror of enemies. Therefore they return to the path of birth and death in this material world. By me, in my unmanifested form, this entire universe is pervaded. All beings are in me, but I am not in them. And yet everything that is created does not rest in me. Behold my mystic opulence. Although I am the maintainer of all living entities, and although I am everywhere, I am not a part of this cosmic manifestation. For myself is the very source of creation. Understand that as the mighty wind blowing everywhere, rests always in the sky, all created beings rest in me. O son of Kunti, at the end of the millennium, all material manifestations enter into my nature, and at the beginning of another millennium, by my potency, I create them again. The whole cosmic order is under me. Under my will it is automatically manifested again and again, and under my will it is annihilated at the end. O Dhananjaya, all this work cannot bind me. I am ever detached from all these material activities, seated as though neutral. This material nature, which is one of my energies, is working under my direction, O son of Kunti, producing all moving and non-moving beings. Under its rule, this manifestation is created and annihilated again and again. Fools deride me when I descend in the human form. They do not know my transcendental nature as the Supreme Lord of all that be. Those who are thus bewildered are attracted by demoniac and atheistic views. In that deluded condition, their hopes for liberation, their fruitive activities, and their culture of knowledge are all defeated. O son of Pritha, those who are not deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, original and inexhaustible. Always chanting my glories, endeavoring with great determination, bowing down before me, these great souls perpetually worship me with devotion. Others who engage in sacrifice by the cultivation of knowledge worship the Supreme Lord as the one without a second, as diverse in many, and in the universal form. But it is I who am the ritual, I the sacrifice, the offering to the ancestors, the healing herb, the transcendental chant. I am the butter and the fire, and the offering. I am the father of this universe, the mother, the support, and the grandsire. I am the object of knowledge, the pure fire, and the syllable Om. I am also the Rig, the Sama, and the Yajra Vedas. I am the goal, the sustainer, the master, the witness, the abode, the refuge, and the most dear friend. I am the creation and the annihilation, the basis of everything the resting place, and the eternal seed. O Arjuna, I give heat, and I withhold and send forth the rain. I am immortality, and I am also death personified. Both spirit and matter are in me. Those who study the Vedas and drink the Soma juice, seeking the heavenly planets, worship me indirectly. Purified of sinful reactions, they take birth on the pious heavenly planet of Indra, where they enjoy godly delights. When they have thus enjoyed vast heavenly sense pleasure and the results of their pious activities are exhausted, they return to this mortal planet again. Thus, those who seek sense enjoyment by adhering to the principles of the three Vedas achieve only repeated birth and death. But those who always worship me with exclusive devotion, meditating on my transcendental form, to them I carry what they lack and preserve what they have. Those who are devotees of other gods and who worship them with faith actually worship only me, O son of Kunti, but they do so in a wrong way. I am the only enjoyer and master of all sacrifices. Therefore, those who do not recognize my true transcendental nature fall down. 
Those who worship the demigods will take birth among the demigods. Those who worship the ancestors go to the ancestors. Those who worship ghosts and spirits will take birth among such beings. And those who worship me will live with me. If one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, fruit, or water, I will accept it. Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer or give away, and whatever austerities you perform, do that, O son of Kunti, as an offering to me. In this way you will be freed from bondage to work and its auspicious and inauspicious results. With your mind fixed on me in this principle of renunciation, you will be liberated and come to me. I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone. I am equal to all, but whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend, is in me, and I am also a friend to him. Even if one commits the most abominable action, if he is engaged in devotional service, he has to be considered saintly, because he is properly situated in his determination. He quickly becomes righteous and attains lasting peace. O son of Kunti, declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. O son of Pritha, those who take shelter in me, though they be of lower birth, women, vaishas, merchants, and sudras, workers, can attain the supreme destination. How much more this is so of the righteous brahmanas, the devotees, and the saintly kings. Therefore, having come to this temporary miserable world, engage in loving service unto me. Engage your mind always in thinking of me. Become my devotee. Offer obeisances to me and worship me. Being completely absorbed in me, surely you will come to me.